Welcome to lecture 11 of Triple 157 and in this lecture we will be talking about bit error rate and how to analyze the bit error rate of uh, PAM constellation. It's the simplest uh, one. Uh, here's the outline of this lecture. The lecture will be divided into four parts. First, I'll introduce to you what is the effect of channels in the constellation and constellation maps and uh, what does the decision region play, how does what is the role of the decision region and uh, the occurrence of errors in the modulation. The other parts will be your symbol detection problem. How does the demodulator decide what symbol is transmitted based on its observation? We call that hypothesis testing. Uh, the digital channel model, uh, the noise in digital communications, how do we quantify it and how do we uh, measure the corruption in digital modulation and finally after all that, we will talk about how we analyze the bit error rate, okay, and I'll show you how to characterize it. Okay, so recall that when you transmit a signal through a channel, it's an uh, analog signal. It will be corrupted by internal and external sources. Internal meaning that it could be a problem in the hardware design. External where it could be interference. Generally, we model noise as additive, so we can consider it as a form of external noise, but in reality, it's actually internal within the hardware. Depending on the temperature, your random movement of electrons within your hardware, but we can, in a system's perspective, we can look at it as some form of external noise because it just adds to the uh, analog signal, th this noise. Now, the effect of that, quite simply, in intuitive uh, terms, is that when your, your received constellation will be displaced, basically. So if you try to transmit S2 here for this figure in this example, if you try to transmit S2, you will receive some R that is a displaced version of S2. Okay. So what the, the modulator does is that if this signal is close to S2, it will decide that maybe it's S2. That's one way of looking at it, but we will uh, talk about that more in detail in the uh, next section, okay? Okay, for this lecture, we'll only assume that the uh, hardware is ideal and that uh, we'll only focus on external factors, such as more on the additive white Gaussian noise, okay? So what happens when your constellation is under noise? Your transmitted constellation ideally looks like this for a 4QAM or a QPSK constellation. But when you transmit it under uh, noise, you will get the received constellation right here on your right. You have multiple symbols displaced from their original position. So this uh, one dot here represents one received symbol. And there are uh, 100,000 dots in this uh, figure right here. So as you can see, uh, there's still some form of division between the constellation. Okay. There's still some form of division. You can still see visually the distinct uh, symbols in your constellation. Okay. Well, what if we increase the noise? If we increase the noise, the radius of... Let's, let's, let's look at it as a circle. The radius of this circle, if you have a larger noise, the radius of the circle will actually increase. So you will find the symbols here. And at some point your circle will overlap with the decision region and when the symbol falls over the decision region then your demodulator will have an error in the modulation and that's what we'll quantify in this lecture okay so uh, how do we remove noise we remove noise as i've told you by decision so if your receive symbol is close enough to another symbol, the receiver will say, oh, this is the symbol that was trans probably transmitted. Okay. So this decision rule is called is actually called the maximum likelihood decision rule. So this is the maximum likelihood decision rule. And you don't need to know the details of how this came about for now. Okay, for, for electronics engineering students, you will encounter this again in your uh, digital communications course. Okay. So the decision boundary is set up 
such that uh, in the most basic setup rather is that the decision boundary can be found in the midpoint between two symbols at any constellation okay this is the easiest way to set up the decision boundary okay? but uh, depending on your probability distribution this decision boundary may not be the most optimized decision boundary okay for now let's say that it's the easiest way to set up there are other ways to set up the decision boundaries the easiest way to set it up is at the middle okay so i've already shown you this in the previous uh in the two weeks ago okay uh, two lectures ago rather so uh decision boundary you can see here for uh, an 8psk uh, it looks like you're slicing pizza okay since the psk constellation lies on a unit circle not not a unit circle on a circle with radius a Okay. This radius A defines the energy, if you recall. Okay. If you want to slice up the, the different regions of APSK, you slice it up like it's pizza. Okay, The angles between the decision regions are constant. And for your 16 quam, uh, you'll have different squares. Okay. As your decision regions. So... The intersection between your decision boundaries forms squares. So that's how you form the decision boundaries, quite simply. Okay? So if we have uh, <clears throat> a larger distance between symbols, that means it's more robust to noise. Since if we have larger noise, recall, if we have larger noise, your symbols could be found within a radius, within a, a circle of radius uh, that is dependent on the noise power. The larger the noise, the larger the radius. If we space the symbols farther apart, we will be able to mitigate the effect of the noise. Okay? There will be less uh, errors in deciding if you have a larger distance between symbols. So basically, the robustness of your digital modulation technique is largely dependent on the minimum distance between symbols, which is related to the power that you'll need to transmit the symbols over the channel, right? There you go. So an error in the modulation, I've already told you this, occurs if the receive symbol crosses a detection boundary. If the noise is large enough, your symbol will cross the detection boundary. It will be displaced large enough such that the receiver will think it's a different symbol, right? And this event occurs randomly. The probability of this occurring is characterized by the bit error rate. Okay? The bit error rate is a metric used to characterize the robustness of a digital modulation scheme. And you will see in this uh, lecture series how it will be related to the minimum distance or how correlated it is to, it, to the minimum distance. I've already told you this, but less probability of error means your uh, technique is more robust. So just to summarize, the effect of a communication channel in a digital modulation technique is visualized using constellation maps. So the effects can be character categorized rather as internal or external. You've already seen this actually in the previous week about uh, transmission over communication channels. So if your, your internal effects include hardware issues, problems in your hardware design, it could be problem. Uh, it could be your antenna, it could be your transmission line, any physical effects from the hardware. External effects include noise and external interference from other users. Okay. Now, the demodulation of digital signals uses decision boundaries to decide which symbol is sent given observation. We call this hypothesis testing. It's a special case of hypothesis testing and we'll talk about that in a later part of this lecture. Your errors occur due to the effect of channel on the received constellation and we use the bit error rate to characterize the performance or robustness of a digital modulation technique. Okay. So that's the end of this part of the lecture. Okay. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much and see you next meeting.